Some of my ancestors advised me it would be the wise thing to do. Meddling ghosts, he silently cursed. He checked her mind for her reaction and said, I'm sure you were frightened. She froze. You can read my thoughts and emotions? He nodded, forcing himself to not feel guilty over the fact. It was strange. He had never felt he was violating his other assignments' privacy when he used their auras and more to his advantage. Yet with Fawn, it often felt as though he were a shameful thief stealing precious jewels from an unguarded window display. It was too easy, and more importantly, it felt wrong. Unaware of his inner turmoil, Fawn sat up as curiosity shot through her. She scooted so close to him he could smell the faint scent of vanilla and coconut wafting off her skin. Does that mean I can read yours? She seemed way too excited by the possibility, and it made him feel slightly ill as a new fear took root in his mind. What if... He cut himself off. No, it wasn't possible. If she had heard any of his thoughts through their relationship, she would have sent him packing long ago. Caleb immediately shook his head, feeling only slightly guilty as he watched the orange excitement disappear from her aura. Mortal and angelic thoughts run on different frequencies. Only divine beings can transcend the language barrier, if you will. She crossed her arms. That's not fair. Now she looked annoyed in addition to disappointed. He smiled, hoping to divert her, before he became serious again. Close your eyes and think of something. Anything will do. He waited a moment, giving her time. Are you doing it? You can't tell? I'm giving you some privacy. A bit late to be the gentleman, don't you think? Don't patronize me or I won't teach you after all. They found Ivy sitting with a date. Vaughn drew up short and Caleb stopped right behind her, so close she could feel his body heat at her back, threatening to engulf her. Her friend stood up and hugged her tightly, cutting off Fawn's ability to draw a breath. Though Ivy was shorter than her, her friend's strength more than made up for her lack of height. Fawn whispered back, I didn't realize we weren't meeting alone. Oh, I can send him away. He's just a hookup from last night. She hid a smile. Yes, I remember you two coming in. Ivy blushed, but made no move to hide it. They both knew she had the more voracious sexual appetite between the two of them. Fawn didn't exactly approve of the almost nightly rotation of hookups coming through their dorm, but as long as her friend was happy and safe, who was she to judge? Ivy turned to her date and said, My friend and I need some girl time. Could you give us some privacy? I'll text you later. Instead of being offended like Fawn expected him to be, he rose as if in a trance and left them without a word or complaint. Fawn stared at his retreating back for a moment before turning her incredulous eyes to her friend. Ivy shrugged and said, He's not really one for words. Fawn's doorbell buzzed. She stared at the door before asking, Who is it? Hey, sis, let me in. She opened her door and saw her brother standing outside with a smile. She hugged him tightly before pulling back and asking, What are you doing here? You stopped answering my calls, and I wanted to check on you. You're lucky Mom makes us wear these necklaces, or I would have been worried something really bad had happened. He looked around and asked, Where's your precious angel, anyway? Isn't he supposed to be glued to your side at all times? What if I wasn't me, but a demon impersonating me? No one can pretend to be you without me noticing. Really? They wouldn't be able to capture your signature, strange combination of lovable yet frustrating personality. He rolled his eyes. Thanks for that. Do me a favor and actually answer my question about Caleb. He's coming in a few minutes. He keeps asking to stay here overnight, but I said no. Luckily, Ivy hasn't fought me on it. Her brother shook his head. As much as I dislike the guy, I agree with him. If you're safer with him around, he should be here. Fawn blinked. The world must really be ending. I never thought I'd hear the day when you agreed with Caleb. 
Caleb reached out to her and squeezed her hand. Love, are you sure you want to jump back into your magic lessons? You've been through a lot of stuff recently, and I'd hate for you to tire yourself out. I'm fine. She pulled away from him. I really am, she added when Alec and Ivy watched her as though she might explode. Everyone just needs to calm down. I'm going to make space in the living room for us to train. Fawn. Caleb started to follow her, but Alec grabbed his arm. Maybe we should listen to her. The worst that happens is she messes up the furniture. I've seen Fawn wired, but I've never seen her like this, Ivy said. That's what I'm worried about, Caleb said, keeping an eye on the entrance his soulmate had walked through. I see you redecorated my old quarters, Lucifer said. I don't like it. You should definitely fire your interior designer. He paused. How long did you wait after banishing me before you erased any trace of my presence here? A month? A year? A decade? A century? Oh, wait. You started immediately and turned my fellow brothers against me by making me angelic enemy number one. Do you know what it's like being hunted by everyone you once called family? Do not act as though you were innocent. Your rebellion required swift disciplinary action. You left me no choice. The walls seemed to waver as his deep voice rumbled through the hall. I know why you're here, and the answer is no. Lucifer placed his hand over his heart. How you judge me, father. I'm not going to demand anything. I'm not the spoiled youth I used to be. I swear I've changed. You're just as impertinent now as you were back then. Lucifer straightened his spine. Then I'll get right to business. 